So a while back, my DI fluid refractometer started having some issues and it was really just not reading things correctly, giving me way too high readings. It's also got a problem with the screen that you can kind of see right there where something with the LCD panel was kind of jacked up. I contacted them and it's out of warranty because apparently this thing, I think it's only got like a year warranty and it, they're not going to replace it. I didn't want to ship it back to them to repair it. And so that means, eh, let's tear it apart, see what's inside. So I'm expecting to obviously find a battery, something that's going to have some Bluetooth connection. I imagine it's going to be sealed really well because it's supposed to be water resistant. Although I do think that may be failing and that's why this screen is kind of jacked up. We may find out that it's uh, ultrasonically welded or something like that. So the first thing is just to crack this thing open. So let's see what we got. So we're going to be breaking out some safety glasses. And hey, if you're looking for a good time, call the people at Proxon. They make some, some pretty cool stuff. So I've got a metal blade on the end of this, and these things cut a little bit better than the, the fiber blades that they usually come with. So I uh, bought some of these a while back for a separate project. And here we go. So I mentioned this thing was sealed, and so you can see down there by the USB a couple of really interesting things. Number one, the USB port is all filled in, and that's pretty hard. So some kind of clear epoxy sealing to keep water from ingressing through the USB. Also blocked off with PCB, and that thing has pogo pins on it. There's our little battery. Uh, let's see, we've got a... Uh, 430 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Looks like this is a sticker for uh, moisture ingress. I'm sure it's red on the bottom, so I'm guessing that's just to see if it got water inside of it. They're supposed to be able to be rinsed and they are sealed. You can see all around the edge where I didn't cut, it still it had to separate and uh, like I said, either welded or some sort of glue sealant in there to keep them together. So all of the brains right here, and again, they are going to communicate with the USB via pogo pin. So this is my first look at it, same as you, because I haven't flipped this thing over until just now. And there's our contacts for the pogo pins. Okay, so we switched over to macro lens so I can get really close down in this thing. So how about that? An ESP32-S3, there's your brains. So again, it had to have something with Bluetooth, and there, that's Bluetooth. So you got your antenna up here on the left, got a crystal there. Guessing this is going to be memory. May have some uh, power regulation or something up here. Not sure what this is. That could be diode protection or something. Okay, so there you go. There's the, the main board. So at the front, we've got the actual sensor. I don't have it out yet. So uh, let's flip the thing over and see what we got on the other side. Okay, so we've got the cable disconnected and the display in there is actually, this thing is directly soldered onto the board. So I'm just gonna have to pull it off. Uh, again, I've written this thing off. So even though this kind of hurts to do, there you go. There's the back side of the PCB. Not much going on over here. We got our button, main button here. Not sure really what we got going on down here. If this is, again, just a bunch of resistor arrays or, or what those are until I look them up. Um, also not sure what we got up here at the top. I have to look that one up too. Um, but not much going on on the back side. Again, just the button and then the pads for the display. The display itself, there you go, Wise Vision, never heard of them. Yeah, it just looks to be kind of a, a standard LCD TFT panel supplier out of China. So nothing fancy there. So nothing super fancy going on on the main board. You know, the ESP32 S3 is a decently powerful dual core, you know, processor, but it's got built in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So I guess, you know, they took advantage of that. So that's why it's got good Bluetooth connectivity. Um, but really nothing fancy on the PCB. I think it's just a double-sided PCB even. Um, all of the fancy stuff is happening in the sensor on this device. That's where they really, I think, spent the money. So let's take a look at that. 
Um, and now we are on to the main show, which is the actual refractometer module. So if I get focused here, you can see it's potted in there with some sort of sealant. So let's see if I can get that thing out of there. All right, so I've got the sensor pried off. And what we've got, so it looks like we've got an optical prism right here. And you can see it's got narrow slits to let light through. Um, I believe this piece coming off, that's probably the probe for temperature sensing because this thing does adjust its calibration for the temperature of the liquid that you're looking at. So there's your optical prism and here is the inside of the sensor. So inside of this sensor, it looks like you've got maybe a mirror. Can't tell if this is two separate sensors. May have a sensor on each side or if it's just one. So I'll get those off there and check. but. Inside of here, like I said, it's either a mirror or it's got two optical entry points. Uh, down here at the bottom, I think that thing's frosted. Can't tell. It kind of looks like it's just a little layer. So let's see if we can peel that up or if it's actually part of it. Yeah, it looks like a little layer. There it goes over in the, <laughs> the wild blue yonder. So there it looks like that may be the actual sensor aperture. I'm wrong. That's not the sensor. Duh. I pulled it up and looked at it closer. Those are little bitty diodes. So that's what lights up. Um, and then it must go through that prism up to the top and then come back. So the sensor must be on this side. Yeah, that was just a, uh, a little diffuser over the LEDs. So you didn't get, uh, you know, spotlights out of that little LED array because that's what those are. Those are just a bunch of little LEDs in there. And I found the diffuser. Again, it's just a little piece of like frosted film, plastic film that was stuck over those LEDs. So now let's uh, dig in a little further. Okay, so there we go. We finally got our old part. So inside of there, like I said, there was uh, either a lens, it looks like, or maybe some sort of filter with this thing, the way it works. Again, it's, it's pretty well calibrated. And so... Uh, that in there, I would assume is some sort of light filter. On the other side of that, we had a tiny little lens, very similar to like a cell phone or miniature camera. And underneath there is the sensor. Here we go. So looks pretty much like a camera sensor, but I'm thinking all of this may be custom. Um, I think this is probably the reason why these things are expensive. Uh, this, I, I looked for part numbers, anything else, and this looks pretty unique. So whatever they're doing, I think this is the part that they've really done their work to design themselves. It does say here DFT-V55, and I'm guessing that DFT is digitized fluid technology. So I, like I said, I think all of this is their own technology that they've got going here. So whatever this sensor is, whether it's a modified camera sensor or whatever it is, this whole assembly does look to be pretty special. So there you have it. We've got her torn apart and got a good look at the inside. Um, I don't really have much else to say about it. You know, the parts are the parts. I am a little disappointed overall at the lack of durability. Um, like I said, the LCD panel having problems, uh, the sensor readings becoming pretty poor. You know, I haven't had this thing for that long, maybe, you know, I don't know, a couple years maybe. And yeah, they warranty it for a year, but for the price, I, I really would expect better longevity out of this thing. Um, that said, you know, it is what it is. I spent the money and I took my chances. If I had it to do over again, maybe I would have just bought that Atigo Japanese thing from the beginning because it certainly feels very durable and they have a pretty good track record. These, though, they were new when I bought them. We didn't know what to expect. Now, you know, having used it and broken one and now torn it apart, I would say, yeah, I would maybe look at something a little better than starting off with one of these. I, I do think their assembly is a bit cheap. Um, I'm not saying it's, it's not good technology, but uh, again, I, I would want something a bit more durable. Anyway, so that's going to be it for this video. If you've got any feedback, comments, or questions, as always, feel free to leave them down in a comment. Thanks.